What's up, Droners? And welcome to A Droners Dialogue. Yeah, we out here to talk. And I wanted to talk about something you guys asked me to talk about. Uh, like last week or two weeks ago? Two weeks ago, I asked you guys to give me some suggestions of some things you guys wanted to hear, um, hear me talk about, and I actually listened to them. I really did. Either way, you guys asked me to be able to talk about um, some of the top reasons why crashes happen. Now, I had to hesitate on this one because I was like, well, you know, why would I talk about crashing? I don't do that. <laughs> okay, but that's a lie. I've definitely crashed before, especially when I was learning how to fly. Um, but I've also crashed an Inspire before, um, and it was horrible. I've crashed one Phantom and one Inspire before. And both of my crashes were 100% for the exact same reason. Um, but I want to talk about the different reasons of different pilots that I know and the reasons they've crashed. And just, you know, give you guys a warning so you guys hopefully don't end up looking like I have um, or like other pilots have when they've crashed before. All right, so I've identified four reasons. There's four reasons why, or at least the four reasons that I recognize of why people are going to crash. Um, and we're going to start off with the most obvious one. The most obvious one is technical error, where it's actually not your fault. It is because of the drone having issues itself. So I was in Cambodia shooting for the show Destination Everywhere. Shout out to Everywhere. He's the best. And we were flying over these rice fields? Salt. Or salt field? Rice field? Salt fields. They were salt fields because it was flats. just like a bunch of flats. <laughs> salt flats. Yeah, salt flats. Ha! Thank you, Tony. So it was like salt flats of like just like literally squares of salt water, which of course is like the most dangerous thing you can fly over is salt water because it destroys all electronics. But who cares, right, Tony? Because you were flying. But either way, um, we were flying over that and we finished all our shots. Last shot of the day, which I told that we didn't need to have happen. And Tony was attempting to fly it and the drone started to stop responding. And when it stopped responding, what this drone automatically does is that it's like, oh man, I'm not getting a signal from the control anymore. I'm going to land where I am. It was over the salt flats. It was over salt water. So it was actually the most excruciating experience ever because we're watching our baby, the drone, literally just incredibly slowly lower itself into the salt water for its death. And we almost had our friend Matt actually j jump out into the water and try to save it. But the drone didn't, had too much of a sense of humor where it started to lower itself and then it stopped. And we are like, oh cool, we're good. You know, so then Matt was like about to jump in the water and then he didn't and he's like, okay, cool. And everybody relaxed, like, Whew. and then the drone was like, nope. And then just went right into the water. And honestly, I'm still a little bit scarred by that experience. But either way, the drone was destroyed and it was not pilot error, even though Tony was the one flying, as we will specify again, Tony was the one flying. It was not pilot error, it was technical error. And that's actually, you know, if you've ever flown a Karma or possibly a Spark nowadays, you'll know that sometimes the, it's not your fault and that drones are hard, they're not easy to make, it's still new technology and sometimes the technology messes up. I remember doing a Droner News and I don't remember the specific statistic about it, but in one of the Droner News I did that it said that more often than not, the reason why a drone cat crashes more than any time is because of a technical error. It was like some statistic from like 2015. So back then, of course, it was technical error. Um, now I'd say, eh, maybe not so much anymore, but be aware, technical errors do happen, and this is why you calibrate your compass every time you're gonna fly if you're flying a DJI drone. This is why you calibrate all your gimbals, this is why you check every single prop. You make sure everything on your side of it and the technology side of it is as good as it can be before you ever take off. Um, so just make sure you do that before you take off because it's not always in your hands when you crash. Coming number two, lack of communication. Um, lack of communication really, really, really is a big thing. Um, I talked about it last week when we were talking about uh, what the drone, professional drone team works like. And uh, yeah, it's a big deal. Like you have to be talking to the people you're working with. You gotta have spotters that are good for you or like visual observers or what they're actually called. Um, and if you're not talking to them, if you don't have a good uh, way to communicate, which I use the EarTech headsets, which are the shit. Um, if you're not doing that and you don't have a good way of communicating, then that can lead to a crash because they could tell you something is there that's not or not tell you something that is there that is. Um, so just make sure you have communication down and a way to communicate. Um, this one's pretty much self-explanatory, so I'm not going to harp on it for too long. Um, but I have been saved from multiple close calls by having a good visual observer and having good communication. So make sure you're talking to your people you're working with when you're flying, regardless of who they are. Next one. Um, this one was actually one of the things that was really surprising to me after starting to fly a drone. It's because it's something you don't normally think about because it's not something you normally ever encounter. And that's actually dealing with depth perception. Is that, you know, the way that our eyes work is that when you're flying something away from you that's small, like a drone, and it's just like away and you still see it, it's hard to tell the, the distance from that drone to the distance from the drone to other things in space that are in front of you. So if the drone is here, like, so this is like a, I don't know how to do this. Okay, so if I'm, I'm the one flying the drone and there's a tree here and you're flying the drone anywhere in the space between you and that tree, 
the depth perception that your eye shows you, you can't tell how close you are to that tree. And you also, if you're not pointing the camera directly at the tree, there's almost no way to tell. And even if you are pointing the camera at the tree, the most drone cameras are very wide angle lenses. So you're not getting an exact like, like distance of how far it is away from you. And it's one of the biggest challenges, one of the biggest reasons why, like I was talking about in the last one, you have to have good communication with your visual observers. Because typically whenever there's like obstacles like that that I'm gonna be flying close to, but I can't tell how far it is away from me, then I have to have somebody else who's near that obstacle to be able to tell me when I'm getting near, when I need to pull up, when I need to go right, left, or whatever, because you won't be able to tell. Now, of course, you have things like the DJI Phantom 4 Pro or the you know, Spark or other drones that actually have the forward-facing sensors, but the you know, Phantom 4 Pro has like the 360 bubble of awesomeness. Um, but it's still a rule of thumb that most drones do not have optical avoidance. So if you're flying in that direction, you'll fly right into the tree and or fly right into whatever the object is. And it's just crazy. If you haven't flown drones before, if you haven't flown drones far enough away from you, you will notice this being a very, very real issue. Is that as you fly away, you have no idea how close it is to things because the drone is so small. You're just like, all right, cool. Well, it's still the same little thing, dot. It doesn't look like it's like you can't sometimes you can't even tell if it's flying to you or from you without looking down at your telemetry data and saying which way is it going. So that's actually a really, really big reason why a lot of people get into to crashes because like, oh no, I'm not close to that yet. No, 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 I'm good, I'm good. Bam! Like, ah. Oh. You know, so you just have to be aware that you cannot tell how far away the drone is from other things when you're flying which I have not had an accident because of that, but like I said in the previous thing I was just talking about, is that that has been, you know, visual observers are, have saved me from those kind of situations. And it also makes it so that I can get closer to them. If you have a visual observer that's closer to it, like, you know, me right now, I'm an overcautious flyer. Like, like I told you, I have crashed before, which we'll get into next, but I'm an overcautious flyer because of the crashes, so I'm probably gonna pull up long before I ever get to close to something, which might take away from the creative or the beautifulness of the shot. So if you have somebody who's there and they can tell you what you're doing and how close you are and give you a countdown of when you're getting close to these objects, then you'll be like, oh, okay, cool, I feel good, I feel good. And they'll tell you, like, no, you gotta stop, or no, just pull up, no, you're good, you're good, you're good. Having somebody in your ear telling you that you're good when you're flying is the best confidence booster. It's like stroking your like drone ego and it makes us it feel like you're doing the right thing. It's good. And last but definitely, 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 definitely not least, this has been my Achilles heel as a drone pilot. Um, you may or may not be able to tell, uh, I am a confident person. Um, <laughs> I have a lot of confidence, which is, can be a fatal flaw. Like, let's keep it real. That can be a, a fatal flaw. And that confidence has caused issues before uh, in overconfidence. Overconfidence to me, outside of technical issues, is the biggest reason why drone pilots will crash. Um, and that's the exact reason why I have crashed twice uh, of two of my professional drones out of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of probably thousands now of flights. But that's the reason why. Um, one of the stories I'll tell is that uh, I was flying a Phantom 3 Pro um, for a music video at a mansion, and um, I killed it. Like, I killed it. These guys were so impressed. Like, I killed, like, it was just like this famous dude's mansion, and I was killing it. This is back in the day, and I was like, oh, yeah, what's up? You know, I'm the drone pilot. Uh. And, like, they were just, like, feeding into my ego, too. Like, dang, you got that shot? I'm like, yeah, I got that shot. You know me? You know, and it's like, it was just, like, great. And I was like, oh, man, you got really close to that. Like, yeah, man, I got this. You know who I am? So it's like I was just in it, you know, I was wearing the Droner t-shirt and stuff, which oh, makes it so much worse now that I think about it. But, you know, I was killing it, you know, it was just great. I had all these amazing shots. They're like, oh, that's going to make the video. The director was on my shoulder like, yo, like, that's crazy. That's crazy. You know, just everybody. There was a bunch of girls there, too. That made it so much worse. There was a bunch of girls. It's like a pool party video. And they were all just like, hey. And I was like, hey, like this drone pilot guy. It was just like killing it. And it was like, cool. And I got all the shots and it was time to land it. And I was like, I'm going to be fancy when I land this thing. So like it was over the top of the roof of the house. And, you know, I was trying to bring it down around. And I nicked the corner of one of the blades. It wasn't even like a real crash. It just nicked the corner of one of the blades. But I don't know if you've ever crashed a Phantom before. They're really easy to crash. Like, you stop one of those blades, the thing just goes into a free fall, and it just did that and landed on a thing that I had to pay for. So, either way, that was a horrible experience, um, especially since I was doing a job for free. <sighs> yeah. Go back to see the other Jonah dialogue, yeah, like the homie hookup thing. Yeah, this is a great example of how you shouldn't fly for free because then you end up paying to do a drone gig and paying to get your drone fixed. Um, so yeah, that really sucked. Um, but yeah, all that aside, that was one of the ways that I had overconfidence issues because my ego was blown by everybody around me. You can't let other people's uh, perception of you affect how you fly. You need to be cautious, you need to be good. Secondly, um, the other time that I, I don't wanna talk about this. Ah, I don't have to talk about this, Tony. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna talk about this one. This one will hurt so bad. 
Okay, so the other one was I wasn't even flying on a job. Oh, this one hurts. Okay, so I wasn't even flying on a job. It was actually with the Inspire, yeah, right? I was flying with the Inspire, and I was out there with my drone flying partner, and I had a, 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 a lady friend with me, too. I'm only bringing her up because she helped with this. Um, a lady friend who I was trying to impress, and um, we were out flying to do, uh, like, to do some testing on the Inspire. We were in this field, and there's a lot of trees, and um, again, the same thing happened where I was flying and you know, I was killing it. Like I was going around doing all these cool things and like doing some like parallax moves and like trying to explain to her what a parallax move was and doing all these kind of things. And you know, I was doing like a parallax, which you know, if you parallax is like when you're turning, like you're flying and you're like turning and keeping the camera steady, making the camera disappear. Um, but doing all that, I was doing that and I was showing her all that and I was looking down and look, like not really watching the drone. And there was a tree that it literally, honestly, it jumped out. Like it really did. Like this branch just like boom, like out of nowhere. And I pretty much flew the drone like full speed right into the, this branch um, and crashed the, crashed the crap out of it. Like it was, it was a real, like the sound, I'll never actually forget the sound of the drone hitting the tree. Um, and the way my heart felt. Like there was like, I felt like there was almost an eternity of time between the drone hitting the tree and then hitting the ground, even though it was only like 15 feet over, off the ground. Yeah, that was real. Um, so yes, overconfidence because she was gassing me up. She was like, "Oh man, you're really good." Da da da. And my drone flying partner, he wasn't really saying that much to be honest. But you know, I was very confident in my abilities because I am a very good pilot, and I know that. Um, but knowing that doesn't mean that I should not ever be have a healthy amount of fear. Um, you know, actually, like one of my favorite—I know this is a completely different analogy—but one of my favorite NBA coaches, Greg Popovich. Um, Popovich, I don't know how to say his name correctly. Um, one of the things that he talks about uh, is that he is one of the greatest teams. He's one of the greatest coaches of all time. He all, no, normally has the better team on the, on the floor. Like, he's won a bunch of championships, most, wins a bunch of games every season, always has a great team, every season. What he teaches his players is to have the appropriate fear of their opponent. Now, that's not going onto the court or going out into these situations and being scared of the opponent. It's more so actually understanding that they can win and they can beat you, like they're professionals, um, and really understanding that you're playing against somebody else who's that professional. So the reason I bring that into what the drone flying thing is that, yeah, you might be a professional drone pilot, but understand that that tree will take you down. You know, like that whatever will take you down. Like the kid throwing the rocks at your drone will take you down. And you know, nothing is really worth taking those risks. So you should have the appropriate fear to understand that you don't need to take unnecessary risks. And that's the goal of today is understanding when it comes to overconfidence is that you need to not take unnecessary risk when flying your drone because it's not necessary. You know, if you're like, oh man, you just get super close to this thing, it's like, well, what is that really gonna change? Because you gotta remember everything is about the camera. Is that really gonna change how, how important this shot is? Is that really gonna make the shot a million times better? Is it gonna change your life and everyone's around you? The answer is 99% no. And if you have to think about, should I do this? Chances are you shouldn't. Um, and also, you know, you know, watch out for other people, you know, like gassing you up, you know, making you feel good about yourself when you're flying because a lot of people are very impressed with drone pilots and very impressed with you flying, assuming that you know how to do it well. If you're doing it in front of people who've never seen somebody fly a drone, then they're just going to be doing nothing but raining compliments upon you and asking you questions about the drone and asking questions about yourself and how long you've been doing it. And you'll just be like, yeah, you know, like flying this drone because I'm a boss, you know, like, so you just can't let that happen. And you have to understand that overconfidence can be the biggest reason why you lose and, you know, it costs you money. Overconfidence can cost you money. So don't let that happen. Make sure you stay safe, stay fly, and yeah, there you have it. Drone Dialogue for today. Droners, thank you for checking out this Drone Dialogue, and make sure that you check out more because we have them. Or if you want to see a really, really dope opening video to a YouTube channel, we have that because why not? As always, please support us and allow us to do what we're doing by checking out our Patreon page and subscribing because that is what makes us go. And as always, especially on this subject, make sure you stay fly.